My name is Nahum Tevet, and I was born in Israel, and I live in Israel since, since I was born. Uh, I was born in a kibbutz, and I live in Tel Aviv. I work in Tel Aviv for many years. I mean, my studio is in Tel Aviv, and I also am teaching for quite many years, 20 years actually. I always use with the most simple material, the cheapest one, uh, for the very simple reason that it's easy to work with, and also it's easy to throw if they are not being used. Uh, and it, it allowed me a great flex flexibility uh, compared to, say, casting or working with iron or stone that everything takes so long to do. So uh, this is very easy on one, one way. And also I think it turned to be something important, not only in terms of material and, and associations, say, for house stuff and uh, everyday objects, but uh, also it looks more, more like a proposal for an object than a real object. It, a little bit like a model or like a shadow of an object or an image of, a, of an object or a plan for an object rather than a real one. And this is important for the whole project, that the whole thing is a little bit like a proposal. I, I was trained very little actually because I never studied in a formal manner. I just worked with a, a very good painter in Israel for about a year. And this was my whole education. <laughs> the rest was only what I found or what I taught myself. Uh, and I really was trained as a painter, but from very early I was painting on plywood. By the way, plywood is something very common in Israeli painting, just because canvas was very expensive. People started to work with plywood. And I was interested in plywood because I was immediately capable of shaping the shape of the, of the painting. Uh, so very quickly, on a very early stage, I was more interested in the painting as object. And at the end, I was interested in object with certain painterly quality, I would say. Uh, but it had something that is maybe more, more serious. Uh, that, that is to do with uh, what is sculpture and uh, questioning the nature of sculpture by getting close to many other disciplines like design, like painting, like furniture, like uh, architecture. So it's never really uh, a regular sculptor, sculpture uh, that there is a plinth with an object standing on it, but there is always this question, can a chair become a sculpture if, if I place it somewhere? Uh, I would say that there is kind of a, a, a limitations of, of a, or set of limitations that I, I place upon myself, which was to work with the very simple objects or forms, like cubes, like rectangles, like, and this actually being abstract were turned into benches or uh, beds or closets or other everyday objects. Uh, and there was a whole process of playing with this uh, object. Say I would do, I don't know, 20 benches and at a certain point I'll get bored. So I will make a little twist. So in this process, at a certain point, uh, many other images kind of appeared. Uh, books are among them. Uh, and the beginning of the books are just like books and they, I was bored with this just like books. So I started perforating them or killing them or doing things with them. So there is always this object that I'm working with and then I'm kind of doing things to this object and doing another thing to the object. And then it kind of evolved to surprising, to surprises, sort of. Uh, well, it's actually started really uh, seven years ago or so. Um, after making few quite very large works, I mean floor works that are maybe 10 by 10 meter or 7 by 7 meter, and there was an ongoing interest in complexity, in a kind of spectacularity in a way, uh, but in a very simple manner. But uh, whenever there is, a, I mean the whole process started by just doing certain little installation or installing some object one next to the other, enjoying it for maybe five minutes and then not being pleased, 
and placing something next to it. So what I realized is that actually I'm interested in a process of working that is just the other way around or the opposite of the regular modernist tradition, which is reductivism. Uh, so instead of, ten, of trying to reduce and getting into certain essence, there is always an attempt to reduce something, but knowing this is impossible or putting a big question mark on it by just placing something next to it, so they start to question it, each other. And the process was that the works actually in the last 20 years grew and grew and grew. And uh, like by the mid-90s, after making few vast installations or room size installation, I decided that I should do one that is really to finish with all this business <laughs> once and forever. I mean, just to do one very big piece and that's it. Then I will start with something, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to do something reductivist. Um, so I, from the very beginning, I, I really wanted to do uh, a piece that is large, that takes big space. I was really interested in the in terms of walking and seeing, like that you really have to walk and you, you, you cannot uh, uh, kind of see everything from one point of view or in one single glance or whatever. But at the same time to avoid chaos and to, to keep a sense that there is certain order and there is some logic going on that so the viewer will try and find out what's what's really is is being told in in this country. So actually, I started with this very large piece and uh, in a studio that was not very large. And at certain point, I I felt that it should be extended horizontally, and I need more space. So I found the basketball hall uh, uh, in an abandoned school, and I just got into that as a studio. I thought I would rent it for one year and finish with the business, but it just became more and more complex and I was kind of uh, fell into the trap I was making for myself. I would always avoid a title that is kind of explaining what's, what one should look at, uh, because I think that the piece is really about inviting someone for a journey or inviting someone for a, an adventure and also me going through this adventure uh, while doing the piece, uh, which, which make the, the, the viewer uh, wonder first what it is and then what am I seeing. Uh, so the title have to do, I think, with this sense of wondering. Uh, it it has to do with the, with the fact that even if you walk around, I don't know, how many times uh, you'll have difficulties to, to, to find a structure or logic or one narrative or whatever. So it become a real very rich complex uh, and the question is, is sort of like what kind of seven times you have to go around it in order to, to make it falling down for you. Uh, uh, so, so this question of repeating and also very various crosses that you go through the the various journeys or, or uh, passages that you may find within this kind of, uh, of whatever we call it, sculpture or installation. Or and, uh, That's also, by the way, a point. You know, we usually this kind of stuff will be defined as installation, yeah. but I never call it installation. No. It's and it's not really a traditional sculpture. So I really I, th I think that on any level there are this kind of ambiguities. I mean, everything really split into more than one defined meaning. And uh, for whatever you, uh, there is a, a, a possibility of reading, there is the, the other thing. And may, maybe this also referred to the many uh, times that mirror images appears and reflections appear and things are placed this way and then the other way. I really have no idea. I think there are something like a thousand maybe a few thousand, I don't know. But, but uh, the, the whole process is really be, be becoming like kind of uh, additive and it grows and grows and grows and have, you know, all these tumors and, and troubles that are developed uh, independently. That's very important that each section is independent, each unit is independent. I don't know, but much too much. <laughs> too many.